Okay, so continuing on, we're talking about the, the personality test. Um, let's see. So the first, let's talk about the MMPI. This was developed in 1950. Um, it's one of the oldest personality tests, but you really have to be careful because it has some flaws. Um, the normative sample was flawed. Uh, it consisted of rural uh, folks from Minnesota, white male, farmer, uh, who had farmers who had uh, relatives in the state hospital. What we know now about mental health is that some of the chronic mental illnesses like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder are uh, genetic. So it could be that some of the folks in the normative sample also had um, uh, mental illnesses. Uh, so what you find <coughs> with the MAPI is that you have to be careful. There are some groups that tend to be really pathologized. Uh, those groups include people that are educated, uh, people that are African American, Hispanic, and women. And so when you're uh, interpreting scores from people from this, these groups, you have to be careful um, and compare these scores with other tests to make sure that what you're seeing is not a weakness in the MMPI. Uh, the test that Oh, let me also say with MMPI, it's not correlated with the DSM, and so you can't make any diagnosis um, based upon scores from the MMPI. Also, the MMPI only covers Axis One disorders. The MCMI is much shorter. It's correlated with the DSM, and it gives you information on Axis One and Axis Two disorders. So. It's a, a much better test from, from that standpoint, as is the PAI, which is also shorter than MMPI, gives you information on Axis 1 Axis two, and Axis 2 disorders, and is also correlated with the DSM. So um, in my opinion, the MCMI and the PAI give you a lot more information than the MMPI. In terms of intelligence tests, I tend to give these tests with uh, my battery, not so much to know their IQ, but but to see how they respond under stress. Uh, people uh, are more stressed taking the IQ test than any other than any of the other um, psychological tests. Um, the first three you see listed are the Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale. Wexler is W E S C H L E R. Um, the adult scale is for people 15 years and older. The next one is the Wexler Intelligence Scale for children for ages 6 to about 13, 14. And then the WIPSI, which is the Wexler Primary Preschool Scale of Intelligence for kids 2 and a half years to 5 years old. The good thing about the Wexler test is that it gives you a lot of information about their IQ um, and their ability to, uh, their intellectual ability. Um, the Stanford Binet has been around for a lot longer, but it's long. It doesn't give you as much information as the Wexler test. So the Wexler tests are the most common intelligence tool for uh, psychologists. And then there's neuropsychological tests uh, like the Luria, Nebraska, and the Halston Ray 10. Um, those you want to give if you um, suspect any sort of brain damage. You want to make sure that you know the extent of the brain damage and where in the brain that the damage occurred. Um, sometimes you run into problems with false positives and false negatives. Uh, with with the neuropsych test, so you gotta, you know, you have to really know what you're doing. Okay, those are other tests you can do for the brain. Okay, the main. Let me go back a slide. Uh, classification system that we use here in um, the U.S. is the DSM, which is it's a fourth edition. Uh, the DSM-5 comes out next year, 2013, and there's going to be major changes in the DSM-5. And as I mentioned in class, we'll go through some of those changes as we um, talk about the various psychological disorders. 
Okay, when I say make a diagnosis, you want to make a five-axis diagnosis. And so we'll talk about what's included on each axis. So in axis one, these are where most of your disorders are going to be. Uh, depression, schizophrenia, anxiety disorders. Um, axis two are just for personality disorders and or mental retardation. So personality disorders, mental retardation go on axis two. Everything else goes on axis one. Now as we go through the actual disorders, uh, this the session, this will make more sense. Um, if there's nothing on axis two, you just write unknown. But you want to write something for each axis to let me know that you did consider it. Axis three are any medical problems that the person has. Heart disease, diabetes, uh, thyroid problems. You want to write all their medical conditions on axis three. Axis four, any psychosocial, psychosocial stressors. So anything that's affecting their functioning. Do they lose their job? Uh, do they get fired from work? Um, but remember, positive things cause stress as well. Getting married, having a baby, winning the lottery, although I could deal with that kind of stress. Um, so you want to put positive and negative things that cause stress in that person's life. And then Axis 4, which is the Global Assessment of Functioning, uh, the DSM has a scale that you can use. Uh, that's not important in this class. Basically, you just write what their functioning level is. Is it poor? Is it adequate? Is it superior? Um, so you just want to write what's their functioning level right now. So when you make an when you make a diagnosis, remember it has to be a five axis diagnosis. Something should be on each axis. If they don't have any medical problems, for example, on axis three, you write none, but you want to write something on each axis. Okay, the the DSM gives you criteria for each disorder, um, but it does not give you what causes a disorder. It does not talk about treatment, nor does it talk about theory. So the DSM is very is atheoretical, does not talk about cause, does not talk about treatment. Okay, we talked about some of the uh, downsizes to um, labeling, you know, uh, that person has this um, uh, label for the rest of their life. Um, as I mentioned, once you get diagnosed, uh, you can get new diagnoses, but those diagnoses stay with you. You always want to factor in culture. If you don't factor in culture, it's like looking at a picture out of focus. You want all the information that you can get, especially cultural information, especially religious information. Religion is a very big part of a person's life, so getting that information uh, can be very helpful. Okay, so that's it for uh, clinical assessment.